Welcome. Today we continue on on our series about pain. All of us have been in situations where we find ourselves to be powerless. That feeling of helplessness that comes from having professional problems, problems at work, financial issues, issues with unemployment, or even bankruptcy. Or maybe that's the feeling of helplessness that you get because you find yourself that you wake up some morning and all of a sudden you are facing some sickness or a loved one is. Or maybe every day when you wake up, you know the pain that you will face because of a chronic illness that you're suffering with. Or the feeling of helplessness that can come from when something changes in your life. Something that goes from good to bad, or something that has been um, very constant suddenly leaves your life. So maybe it is a fire, a natural disaster, a broken relationship, being hurt by somebody that you love. Everyone, given enough time, at some point in their life, find themselves helpless. But not everyone knows how to recover and restore themselves to wholeness after a situation with helplessness. What happens is we begin to or continue that question of why. Why is this happening to me? Why am I in the midst of such pain? Why am I so helpless? Why can't I get past this? And I can't handle this anymore. Job has the same problem. Job was in such anguish. In a short time, his entire life changed. His finances, his wealth, and his family, everything was gone. Everything that gave life meaning and purpose was stripped away from him. His livelihood, his possessions, the only member of his family he has left of his wife. And she's against him. She says to him, you might as well just curse God and die. Sometimes we're a little hard on Job's wife, feeling like she doesn't have the same kind of faith as Job has. But this poor woman has gone through the exact same thing as him. She's lost her position. She's lost her means for livelihood. And she too lost all her children. And she feels so deeply wounded that she can't imagine any way to get out of this place. For Job, he looks at this situation and he questions the day that he was born and wonders why he was ever born to just suffer this pain. Whereas Job's wife, on the other hand, just gets so angry at her husband 
for remaining faithful to God when God had done such destruction to their life according to her. Today we're going to talk about helplessness in life. We're going to talk about how can we remain connected to God when such bad things happen? How can we remain connected when we feel like God has abandoned us? Or even worse, that God has caused our pain. Today, we're going to consciously do something that we probably do all the time, but we probably do not place a name on it. So what we're going to do is something that is called theological reflection. Theological reflection is simply to look at your situation and to look at it through the lens of your faith, through your lens of your faith in God. If you go to the web page, you will see that there is a handout on steps to go through theological reflection. And so I ask you to look at that later and consider using that. But let's begin. St. Absalom said that faith is seeking understanding. So the reason that we re reflect theologically is because we are seeking to understand what has happened in our life. It begins to look at where is God? Where is God in the midst of my pain? Where is God when things go so wrong? Maybe the first thing we need to look at is who is God to us? For some people, God is a distant divine being who kind of just watches from a distance and then reacts at a distance to the situations that are occurring here on earth. For others, he's the statistic taker. He kind of figures out who's naughty and who's nice and puts things into 50% uh, good, 50% bad, figures out things that way. For some other people, God is the great party pooper. If you want to do anything fun, you might as well not have God there because God is going to ruin it for you. And there are others who see God as the great criticizer. God is the one who's always pointing the finger and telling you that you have got it wrong. All too often, when we reflect on a situation and we are theologically reflecting, so we're looking at it from the realm of our faith, we reflect on it in a place in which we are looking at ourselves and trying to determine what did I do wrong. Have you ever found yourself in that place that something terrible happens and immediately your first question is, what did I do to cause this situation? Even if it's something that you know that you had no part of it, you still feel guilty. There's a popular uh, commercial about insurance and it says that your car is sitting on the, in a parking space and a truck backs into it. And after you're done talking to your insurance agent, you feel like you are a part and responsible for this accident. And then you realize you weren't even in the car. Well, I think that sometimes that's how we look at things. Bad things must be happening to me because I did something wrong. And then we have friends that remind us that maybe the only reason bad things are happening is because we've done something wrong. That's exactly what happened to Job with his friends. However, today I want us to look and reflect through a different theological experience. It is a great and wonderful blessing. It is the, the wonderful, loving grace of God that allows us sinners to be forgiven and have our sins washed away so that we can continue on in our life. But at the same time, we have an amazing God 
He comes beside us, not just when we have sinned, but when we have been wounded by situations in our life. As far as I know, there is no English word that describes exactly the concept I'm going to share with you today. The concept is a Korean concept, and I heard about it from a pastor. His name is Reverend um, Andrew Sung Park. Pastor Park is a professor as well as a pastor in the New York Conference, and he wrote a book called The Wounded Heart of God. And in The Wounded Heart of God, Park talks about the concept of Han, H-A-N, Han. It is about deep woundedness. It is about the pain and the suffering that comes upon us sometimes in life, very much like what happened to Job. Park describes Han this way, when suffering reaches the point of saturation, it implodes and collapses into a condensed feeling of pain. This collapsed feeling of sadness and despair and bitterness is called Han. In short, Han can be defined as spiritual hurt and pain. Han is the suffering of the innocent who are caught up in bad situations and are rendered helpless. And so this woundedness, this brokenness, this pain and suffering manifests itself in different ways in our life. It might come across as anger or shame or blame or helplessness or resentment or a number of destructive emotions. It might also come across as resignation and regret and absence and bitterness and revenge. Han, the feeling of being overcome by a situation. The woundedness that caused Job to question the very purpose of his life, I would describe as Han. And for Job and his wife's loss, that would be the same, that she had a deep pain because of the situation that occurred. Andrew Park tells the story of his mother's life and how she suffered an entire life of pain, that in the midst of being moved out and forced out of her homeland in Korea, and finally ending up in the United States, that each step along the way added to his, her pain, and that even to her dying days, she was wounded. She could not see how God had come alongside her, the one who had suffered because of others. How can we theologically, or how can we think about God in the midst of such deep and awful pain? How can we find faith when we look at the Han that we are suffering or others are suffering that we love? Job's friends saw the situation and they just jumped to the conclusion that Job a good, a good God gives the good, good things and gives the bad punishment. So therefore, you must have been doing something wrong. But for Job, he knew that he had not done anything. And yet he couldn't put together why he was feeling this deep pain. For us as Christians, we have the gift of Jesus Christ. We have the gift of a savior, a gift of being free from our sins, but we also have the gift of the one who suffered innocently, the one who was wounded by life situations and was so blameless too. Andrew Park points out that too often in church, we are the champion of sinners. 
We want people to leave their broken lives and come and have themselves set free by forgiveness. But at the same time, we need to be the champions of those who have been wounded and to be able to sit quietly and hold with them their pain or their harm. Too often, this places those who are wounded in a very precarious place. You see, they want to be the good Christian. They want to be the ones that forgive and let go of things. And yet, their pain is so deep that it, that is not easily done. So what can they do, or what can you do, or what can I do about my wounded heart? What can happen with my suffering? Too often, we sit in church and we pretend we don't have pain. We put on that brave face, and when people are asking us how we're doing, we simply say we're doing fine. Today I invite you to let go of any of your preconceptions of how you should be dealing with this pain, but instead be comfortable enough to sit with your pain, your brokenness, and your woundedness. Take time and think about where is God? And I invite you to see God sitting beside you. And even if you're not at that point yet, I hope that you will invite a brother and sister in Christ to sit beside you. As Christians, we were taught that the cross is the sign of victory over sin and death, and it offers salvation for the sinner. But today, I would like to include Andrew Park's addition to the value of the cross. Pastor Park explains that we need to expand our thinking about the cross, that the cross also represents the many innocent victims who have suffered injustice and oppression, and that it is the symbol also of God's Han, God's woundedness, that Jesus the innocent suffers alongside us and all of humanity. And this way, that the cross can allow healing for the broken and the wounded. Today, I ask you to think about what are the things that are causing you deep pain? What are the things that you wonder, where is God in the midst of this situation? There might even be things and situations that are occurring that are so difficult that you wonder, like Job, if it would be better that you had never been born. But I promise you that your God, just like Job's God, had you born for a purpose. And so I invite you to allow God to come beside you in your brokenness. Let us pray. Dear God, I just ask you to be with us as we reflect on those moments that break us and wound us and allow us to know your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good day. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope that we see you again in church soon. Bye-bye.